friends, today we are doing part two of our self-portrait project. I wore my Mona Lisa shirt today. Now, Mona Lisa is not a self-portrait because a self-portrait means you do it yourself. Mona Lisa is just a portrait done by Leonardo da Vinci. I thought that could be a fun inspiration for our drawings today. So last week we learned all about the proportions of the face, how to draw all of your facial features, and how to draw your hair. And then in our Google Hangout, I gave you some more tips on how to draw different hairstyles. So if you are having trouble drawing the hairstyle that matches your own hair, then you can look at our recorded Google Hangout and those will help you. So today, um, we are going to color our self-portraits. You're going to learn about the choices that you have for your self-portraits. And we are going to read the book called When I Grow Up by Al Yankovic. Now, second and third graders, you probably remember this from first grade because we read the story. I think it's such a cute story and it's so funny. And what I really want you to pay attention to today is the illustrations. So I'm going to start by reading this book. Then I'm going to give you your choices for your self-portraits. And then we're going to start coloring. So listen carefully. When I Grow Up by Al Yankovic. I waited so long for the hours to pass, but soon it was noon there in Mrs. Krupp's class. And Thursday at noon, as I'm sure you know well, is the time of the week when we do show and tell. And this week, the subject so special to me was when I grow up, what am I going to be? That's something I'd really been thinking about, and I just couldn't wait to let all those thoughts out. So when Mrs. Krupp said, who's ready to share? You can guess who is there with his hand in the air. I raised both my hands just as high as they'd go. And I bounced up and down and then, what do you know? Well, Mrs. Krupp picked me, yes, me to go first. Oh, I was so happy, I thought I would burst. I proudly stood up and began my oration concerning my choice for a future vocation. Ahem. <clears throat> Esteemed friends and colleagues, and dear Mrs. Krupp, I know what I'm going to be when I grow up. Why, I'll be the greatest chef you've ever seen. The world will go crazy for my oak cuisine. I'll tantalize taste buds with my rigatoni, sautéed with black truffles and pickled bologna. Surrounded by kumquats and candied pig's feet, topped with shrimp-flavored lollipops. Bon appetit. My walls will be filled with awards that I've gotten for toast on a stick and my Twinkies au gratin. My kitchen will be the most famous in France, so make reservations 12 years in advance. There's no doubt about it. I'm certain, you see, a world-renowned chef is what I'm going to be. That's very nice, Billy, sweet Mrs. Krupp said. Who wants to go next? Maybe Susie or Fred? I said, hold the phone now. I haven't departed. Hang on to your seats, because I'm just getting started. See, maybe instead I could be a snail trainer. Man, that would be awesome. Why, that's a no-brainer. I'll teach all my snails to do really neat tricks. They'll play dead, roll over, and even fetch sticks. Of course, all the sticks will come back two years later, but working with snails, I mean, what could be greater? They'll do any stunt that I like. Holy moly. I'll train them to pedal a bike really slowly, then jump, I mean ooze, through a huge ring of fire, and crawl at a snail's pace across a high wire. Then finish by writing my name with their trails. That's right, I'll be Billy, the master of snails. Or else maybe I'll be the lathe operator who makes the hydraulic torque wrench calibrator, which fine tunes the wrench that's specifically made to retighten the nuts on the lateral blade that's directly beneath the main radial sockets inside cooling systems on X-14 rockets. And since this profession's as cool as can be, well, who would be better to do it than me? Say, here's an idea, perhaps just for laughs. 
I might make my living by milking giraffes. It's oh so cliche to get milk from a cow, and I bet all those cows need a break anyhow. Imagine me milking way up in the air. I'd use a tall ladder instead of a chair. What? Milking giraffes? Mrs. Krupp said, oh please. I countered, how else could we make giraffe cheese? Now don't interrupt me, I'm not really through yet. There's still lots of stuff that I'm planning to do yet. Cause maybe I'll be a gorilla masseuse. Or an artist who sculpts out of chocolate mousse. Or a rodeo clown, or a movie director or maybe professional pickle inspector, or big sumo wrestler, or hedge fund investor, or smelly pit sniffing deodorant tester. Or I'll be an expert on nuclear fission, or else a foot model, or friendly mortician, or waiter, or skater, or master debater, or dinosaur dusting museum curator, or TV repairman, or sidewalk sign waver, or part-time assistant tarantula shaver. And that's about when Mrs. Krupp said, now Billy, please make up your mind. This is getting quite silly. Which one of those things are you going to choose? I shuffled around and I looked at my shoes. And finally I said, my great-grandfather Bob's been a whole lot of things, had a whole bunch of jobs. A butcher, a barber, a bellman, a bouncer, a telephone psychic, and bingo announcer. You know what? He just turned 103, and he's still not quite sure what he wants to be. See, I'm only eight now, so frankly I'm hoping you'll cut me some slack if I leave options open. Let's just wait and find out what my future brings. Hey, I might have time to do all of those things. And then the bell rang and we all went to lunch. And as I was sipping my pineapple punch, I pondered professions that I'd like to enter, like brave firefighter or crazy inventor. Or maybe, just maybe now when I grow up, I can be a great teacher like dear Mrs. Krupp. So I love reading that story at the beginning of our first grade self-portrait project because in first grade, we do a self-portrait about what you want to be when you grow up. So second and third graders, you did this already. Um, for this year's self-portrait project, you are going to have three choices. If you hung out with me in our Google Hangouts this or last week, then you already know what our choices are. Choice number one is to make your self-portrait into what you want to be when I grow up, when you grow up. So I want to be an art teacher when I grow up. So I did my self portrait as an art teacher. So I'm wearing an art shirt or an art apron. I have some paintbrushes in my hair. You can see I'm in front of the chalkboard and we have our I can statements there. And then I added the carpet to make it look like our art room and the blue chair. So I wanted to add a lot of details to make it look like I was actually in our classroom. Okay, so that's choice number one, making yourself into your future job, whatever you want to be when you grow up. Choice number two is to make yourself royal. So that means you can make yourself into a king or a queen or a prince or a princess, whatever kind of royal you want. I want you to get really creative with this one. So I gave myself a crown and very fancy jewelry and a castle in the background. So in all of my pictures, I'm really trying to add a lot of details that fill up the whole page and give a bigger, a better picture of what you want to be. And then choice number three is to make yourself into the president of the United States. Or I guess you could be the president of any country because you get to decide how you want to do your own project. So for my self-portrait as the president, I gave myself a suit jacket and a flag pin, and I also added a flag in the background. And for my details, I wanted to do a lot of red, white, and blue. So I did all sorts of stars and decorated them in different ways. 
So those are your three choices. What you want to be when you grow up, uh, yourself as a royal, or yourself as the president. Now, before we get started with coloring, I want you to know that you can use any of the materials that you have at home. So, for instance, I used crayons for the self-portrait, I used colored pencils for this one, and I used markers for this one, just to show you that you can really use any of the materials that you have at home. Don't worry if you don't have the same materials that I'm using in this video. Really, I want it to be fun for you, and so you can use anything you want to be creative. If you want to paint your self-portrait, like Paige in Mrs. Vasco's class, she actually painted her self-portrait. I thought that was really cool. So you can paint it if you want. If you want, you can use sidewalk chalk and do it in your driveway. It's totally up to you. Remember, your self-portrait does not have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look exactly like you. It's time to be creative. And looking at my own self-portraits, mm, kind of looks like me, but not so much. So it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay if your self-portrait doesn't look just like you. I want you to learn the process. That's what's most important. So now we're going to get ready to color our portraits. Okay friends, now we're going to learn how to color our self-portraits and how to add details. Remember you have three choices. So choice number one, doing a portrait of yourself of what you want to be when you grow up. Choice number two, making yourself a royal, so a king or a queen or a prince or a princess. And choice three, making yourself the President of the United States. So, like I said, you can use any materials that you have at home, but the first thing that I'm gonna do is add my details in pencil first, and then I'm gonna color them. So, really quick review. Last week, we learned how to draw our self-portraits, and I showed you how to draw the eyes, nose, mouth, ears, face, and hair. Remember, we used this kind of creepy picture to help us learn the proportions of the face. So that means where everything lines up. So you start by drawing your oval. Your eyes are about halfway down between the top of your head and your chin. Your nose is about halfway between your eyes and your chin. And then your mouth is halfway between your nose and your chin. The tops of our ears line up with our eyes and the bottoms of our ears line up with our nose. And then I like to add a little detail inside the ears. Now here, this is called our hairline. Our hairline comes about halfway down between the top of our oval and our eyes. If you have straight hair, you might want to use a little zigzag line. Or if you have longer hair, you can do a big zigzag line. If you have curly hair, you're going to use a curved line. And all of that information is in our Google Hangouts from last week, where I gave you a little bit more detail about how to draw different hairstyles. Now to draw the hair on top of your head, you have to go above that curve of your oval and do that zigzag line to show the texture of your hair all the way around. Notice my zigzags are kind of going to the side, kind of like a lightning bolt. And then it's really important to erase this line. That line shows your skull. So because your hair is growing from your head, you really don't need that line and you can erase it. So now it's time to add the finishing touches to my self-portrait. So I already did my self-portrait of what I want to be when I grow up and I did an art teacher. But now I think I want to do a different idea. For this one, I am going to make myself into a baker or a pastry chef. You guys know that I love to talk about working at my cousin's bakery and I do all sorts of decorations for cakes. Well, I think that would be a great idea for my self-portrait. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an apron. Now that might be kind of tricky because I'm only going to be able to see the straps under my hair. So if your hair is covering up any details, that's okay. So that looks like the top of my apron that I would wear. Now I want to give myself a hat that you might see a chef or a pastry chef wearing. So I might have to erase parts of my hair and that's okay. Good thing I drew really light. 
So I'm going to start with a curved line that goes across my forehead. And then chef hats are really tall, so it's going to go off my page. Straight line all the way up to the top. Straight line all the way up to the top. Now I have to erase all of those details of my hair because my hat would be covering that up. So I keep my eraser with me while I'm drawing and I'm going to erase my hair. I'm also going to erase it on the sides a little bit too because if I was wearing a hat, the hat would flatten out my hair and so it wouldn't be sticking out like that. So there's my curved line and my straight line for my hat. I accidentally erased those a little bit. And then I'll start my hair here instead and then just connect it to where I already had it. Okay. So now I want to add a few details to my hat. So I'm going to start with a curve that goes across. And then chef hats are white. All they have is a little bit of some folds. So I'm just going to do a few simple lines like that. Now in my background, that's where I'm going to put most of my details. I don't know if I have room to draw an entire kitchen. I mean, I only have this tiny space and this tiny space. So instead, I think I'll fill my background with tasty treats. So I'll start by maybe drawing a cupcake here. Add the lines for the package. And then I can draw the frosting. So I can do a couple rows of that and maybe have it nice and swirly on top. I could even add some sprinkles or I can wait for my marker to do that. I could draw a slice of cake. I'll have the frosting on the sides and on the top. Put a layer in there. Maybe some extra frosting on the top. And how about a cherry on top? Oh, I love cookies. So I could draw some cookies. We'll say this one is an M&M cookie. Um, I'll do a bigger cookie over here. This one I'm going to overlap with my hat. So my hat is actually going to cover part of it, and that's okay. Um, this one, hmm, I think I'll do chocolate chips. So my chocolate chips I'll make smaller. Man, talking about all these sweets is making me hungry. I think I'll add another cupcake up here, maybe a mini cupcake this time. And for the decoration, I might do it a little different. There. Kind of looks like an ice cream scoop, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, there we go. Or maybe we'll call it a muffin. That can be our muffin. And let's see, one more thing. How about a brownie? Oh man, seriously, my stomach is going to start growling. So at the bakery where I work, our brownies are squares like this. So I'm drawing a 3D brownie. Oh, and we can add some frosting on top of that. Mmm, yummy. Oh, I think I need something down here too. What's another thing that you might find at a bakery? Hmm, so we got cookies, brownies, cake. Oh, how about a slice of pie? So I'll do a 3D slice of pie. Got to add the crust. And I actually learned how to draw a slice of pie from watching Art for Kids Hub videos. We actually did a slice of pumpkin pie around Thanksgiving time. Okay, now these are all the details that I want to add to my picture. You do not have to outline anything in Sharpie or in marker unless you want to. I like to outline things before I color it just because I feel like that stands out a lot more. So I'm going to grab my Sharpie and I'm going to start tracing everything in my drawing. So eyebrows, remember your eyebrows show emotion. So depending on how you draw it, they might make you look happy or angry or worried. Hopefully no one's self-portrait looks angry but you can definitely be creative and add any kind of details that you want. Remember our pupil is the part that we color in. That's the black circle in the middle of our eye 
and I left a little white circle inside just to give it some character. Kind of looks like the light is shining. Go. Got it colored in. It's okay if you went outside the lines a little bit. Sometimes when I'm talking while I work or when I'm rushing, I kind of go outside the lines. Now I want to trace the nose. I made my nose kind of like an L. Now the smile. I think I'll skip to the ears. Long C. Oh, I gave myself a little earring. <laughs> Long backwards C. And now I'll do my face shape. So remember, it's not going to be a full oval because we covered it up with our hair and I covered it up with my hat. So I have my hair here. Now if I was actually working at the bakery, I would have my hair in a ponytail so that I didn't get any hair in my tasty treats. And it's okay when you're tracing if you go off of your pencil line a little bit like you can see I'm doing because you guys know that whenever we trace anything with a marker, we always erase our pencil lines. That's really, really important to erase our pencil lines. Got the collar of my shirt. I got my apron. Oop, got to do my lines for the neck. And I think I might trace a couple of these hair details because my hair was curly when I made that video. All right, so got everything in my self-portrait. Now I can trace my details. So I have my chef's hat. Again, our chef's hat, or mine, is staying white. So I'm not going to color that in. Got to add those details of the folds. And now I can start tracing my bakery. So I have my muffin here. I think I'll make it a blueberry muffin when I color it. Here I have my piece of cake. I can't wait to color all of my designs. Got to add that frosting in the middle there. We have our M&M cookie. And really this is all about trying your best. Nothing has to be perfect, so it's okay if you make a mistake. Just remember you can always erase it. Got our chocolate chip cookie. Mm. We have our cupcake. And we have to do the wrapper here. Add those details. And our piece of pie. So now I'm outlining the crust. Okay, so now I outlined everything in Sharpie. Now it's time to erase all of my pencil lines before I start to color it. I like to hold my paper down while I'm erasing because if you don't hold your paper down, you might actually end up ripping your paper. And remember, you can always pause the video at any time. So if I ever do anything too fast, just pause the video, fix your drawing or add whatever kind of details you want, and then you can continue playing it when you're ready. And I want you to start thinking about what you're going to use to color your pictures. So I'm going to use crayons for this drawing, but really colored pencils are great, markers are great, paint, whatever you have at home. Okay, looks like I missed a little spot for my hair right here. There we go. So I wiped away all of the eraser marks, most of them, <laughs> and now it's time to start coloring my picture. So I have this big box of crayons from the art room. So it has a lot of different colors. And I also have 
this box of crayons here. So this is called a multicultural box of crayons because it has colors that are really close to people's skin tones or hair colors. If you don't have these crayons at home, it's totally fine because these colors are also in your regular box of crayons. So let's take a look at some of the colors that are in here. Now there are all different shades of peach and brown and black and white, and these will help you find a color that matches your skin tone. So if your skin is very, very light, you might want to stick with this color. This is called apricot, or sometimes you might find one that's called peach. This one, oh, actually this one's peach. This one is if you're a little bit tanner. Now, my skin is so light, so I'd probably go with this apricot one. And then, depending on what your skin tone is, you might use tan, you might use burnt sienna, sepia, which is a darker brown, or black, okay? Now this one here, this one's called mahogany, this would be really good if, you're, if you have red hair. This is more of a reddish brown color, um, or if you have red hair, you could also use orange or actual red or brown. I mean, you can be creative in the colors that you use. So you might notice I've barely used these crayons. I actually haven't even used them at all except for the apricot a teeny tiny bit. Because when I was coloring my self-portraits, I was just using the regular box of crayons. So let me put these away and get back to my regular box of crayons to color the rest of my self-portrait. I'll keep them here so you can see what colors that I'm picking. All right, so I'm leaving my hat white. I think I'm gonna start by doing my face. Like I said, find the color that matches your own skin color. So here I have, oh, here's my apricot color. So I'm gonna carefully color, try to stay inside the lines. And I'm gonna color my whole face. I'm gonna go around my eyebrows and my eyes, leaving my eyes white. I wanna make sure that I'm filling in my white spots as I go. And if you go outside the lines a little bit, it's totally fine. It's all about trying your best. Okay, so I've colored my face. Now I wanna color my ears. And don't forget about your neck. Your neck is your skin color too. All right. So now I've colored my whole face, my ears, and my neck. So now I'm actually done with my apricot color. If you really want to go above and beyond, you can make your cheeks rosy by really, really lightly coloring some pink over your cheeks so lightly, so lightly, so it kind of blends in, okay? Now your lips are pink, whether you're a boy or a girl. I know sometimes boys don't really like to color in their lips because they don't want it to look like lipstick, but your lips are pink. So I'm gonna use that same pink color to color my lips. If you wanted to make it less pink, you could always layer your skin color color on top and it makes it a little bit more neutral, so it's not so bright pink and it matches your skin a little bit better. Now I have blue eyes, so I'm gonna find a blue crayon that would be good for my eye color. This is my iris, so this is the only part of my eye that I'm coloring in blue. I'm gonna leave 
those parts white because those are the whites of my eyes. Okay, now it's time to color my hair. My hair is light brown and at the bottom it gets a little blonder. So I'm actually gonna use a couple different shades when I'm coloring my hair. So I'm gonna use this brown, this one's raw sienna. I think I might even layer a little bit of this goldenrod on top just to show the yellow or the blonde highlights that I have in my hair. I mean, it's totally fine to color the whole, whole picture with just one shade of brown, like this regular brown crayon. That's totally fine. So I'm gonna start with this raw sienna color for my eyebrows. Since my eyebrows are so small, I want to be really careful when I'm coloring it in. There we go. Okay, now it's time for my hair. So I'm gonna be real careful under my white hat and then I'm gonna start filling it all in. So if you have blonde hair, you might wanna use a yellow color or like a really light tan color. If you have brown hair, you can use any shades of brown. Black hair, you can use the color black and even layer some brown over it too, just to add a more texture and more value. And like I said before, if you have red hair, you might want to find a reddish brown crayon or you can use orange or you can actually use red. Really whatever you think would match your hair color the best. And hey, if you want to give yourself purple hair, go for it. I mean, this is your self-portrait. So you can be as creative as you want when you're coloring it. Oh, I went outside the lines a little bit. That's okay. So I'm coloring pretty lightly because in a second, I'm going to layer some of that yellow color on the bottom just to make it look a little lighter. Remember, we want our self-portraits to look like us as much as we can, but they're not gonna be perfect. That's why we're learning. And I think I'm even gonna take this regular brown color and make it maybe a little darker in some places. There's usually some shadows under your ear when you tuck your hair back. So maybe I'll add a few more details with this brown. There we go. Okay, so my self-portrait is almost done. Now I just have to do all my details, like my hat, my shirt, my apron, and all of these tasty treats all around my picture. So I'm gonna keep my apron and my hat white because when I work at the bakery, I wear a white apron. And I think I'm going to pick, let me put my hair colors back. Maybe I'll pick purple for my, um, for my shirt. I picked a blue violet, so let me pick a different one. Ooh, this one's pretty. Plum, I love that. I love this plum crayon. So I'm going to color my shirt purple. I wanna go around my hair and around my apron. You can add details to your clothes too, like if you're wearing a pattern. In this self-portrait, I have myself wearing a striped shirt, so you could add details if you want. And then I can't forget about this shoulder. Okay, now it's time to color my pastries. All right, so I think I'll start with the pie. My husband loves cherry pie, so I'm gonna make the inside of my pie red. And then the crust is gonna be a light brown. Oh, that was probably a little too dark. That's okay. Maybe I'll use a lighter, oh, this goldenrod color would be perfect. Now I'm going to color my cupcake. Mm, I think I'll make this 
wrapper gray. And then I'm going to give it pink frosting. Oh, and I can add sprinkles on it too. Oh man, this is looking so delicious. Okay, I want to do different color sprinkles, so I'm going to add some blue, maybe some orange. I'm not sure if yellow will show up, but it's worth a try. And some green. I love rainbow sprinkles. And I'll add some purple. Yum. Okay, so now I'm going to do my chocolate chip cookie. I'm going to color the whole thing brown first. And then color the color uh, chocolate chips on top. And actually, I'll color my M&M cookie while I'm at it. I'm going to go around the M&Ms. Okay, so... My chocolate chips are going to be a dark brown, so I'm going to take my darker brown color and I'm pressing a little bit harder so it looks even darker. And while I have this dark brown, I'm going to color my brownie. Mmm, yummy. And I'm going to save the frosting on top. I'm going to make that whipped cream, so I'm going to keep it white. And, oh, I have to do my M&Ms now. So let's say I have a blue M&M and a green and a red. Okay, so there is my M&M cookie. Now I need to make my piece of cake. I'm going to make a yellow cake. And I'll leave this frosting white and this frosting white, and then I'll add some details to the frosting on the top. I have to make my cherry red. Oh, I love it. And now my muffin. All right, so I'm going to make a blueberry muffin, so I'm going to color it this really light brown. And then I think I'm going to add some blue dots to it so it looks like a blueberry. There we go. And then I'll give this one a gray wrapper just like my cupcake. Okay, so now my portrait is really done. And you can take it to the next level and add any kind of details you want. Like I added my sprinkles on my cupcake, so maybe I'll add some lines for sprinkles just in the background just to add a few more colors and to brighten up your whole picture it's really up to you what kind of details you add you can make this totally unique and you can make it any way you want i love seeing your creative ideas so this week you are going to send me a picture of your finished self-portrait so don't forget that you are going to have your parents or your grandparents, whoever you're with, send me a picture of your drawing. So you can send it to my email, acrist at ofcs.net, or you can send me a picture on blooms. Starting last week, you only have to pick two specials to complete by Friday. I really hope you pick art because I love seeing how creative you guys are with the art projects that we've been working on. All right, I'm almost done with my sprinkles. Maybe I'll just do a few more purple ones. Oh, that's black. Don't want to pick that. Oh, here we go. Wow. This really looks like it's raining sprinkles. <laughs> so I cannot wait to see your self-portrait. Don't forget to send me a picture when you're all done. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video and to see you on our Google Hangout. So good luck. If you have any questions, please email me. And I hope you guys have a great week.